What's good, YouTube? What's good? What's good? You know, we was chilling on live last night. And um, I had mentioned some things about um, the four four pillars that I that I actually um, uh, adhere to uh, when it comes to um, working with spirit. And I wanted to go over that today. Um, because in the video, you know, I was a little turnt. So I couldn't remember, actually, what the fuck the four pillars was at the moment. And um, because they're so embedded into my everyday thinking, my perception and the way that I work with spirit, it was like, damn, I haven't taught on this in so long. I forgot. I'll be forgetting shit that I teach. Um, but <clears throat> one of the things that came to me when I began to start working with spirits was it was like, it was these things that I kept hearing the elders and my God brothers and people around me who have wisdom and who have been working with spirits um, longer than I have. It was things that they would always tell me that I put together into four pillars. Um, Hold on for a second, guys. Just responding to a few people. So, um, Regardless of whatever tradition that you belong to or that you are subscribed to, one thing that was revealed to me was that all of the spirits work together. Okay. Um, and by them working together, they all operate um, um, or connect to us um, in different ways that we interact with the spirit world. Um, one of the things that I realized that the spirits appreciate more than anything is when you have faith. Okay. Faith is basically having confidence and trust in the forces in which you are working with. Okay. Faith is not like the blind faith of the Christian religion or something like that. It's not like they're asking you to have faith in a sense that a Christian would ask you to have faith. Um, because the spirits are always working all different types of miracles and so forth. So they're, they're, they're always working little miracles, big miracles. They're just always working for you when you are working with them. So they constantly showing you, look, we got you. Look, we got you. Look, we got you. This obstacle comes. Look, we're going to get you out of this. Look, this happens. We're going to get you out of that. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. So they're constantly showing you that they're working, which is, for all intents and purposes, increasing your faith and making your faith stronger. Um, and the stronger your faith, the stronger you become in these practices. A lot of times, many people that get initiated, what they tend to do is they associate their title, they associate uh, the spirits that they that they receive um, with their own personal power, which they should, but then for whatever reason, they go into an ego trip, okay? They go into an ego trip, and what this does is this sets them down a path where they begin to start attracting things to them in which they have an opportunity to flex, flex their ego. Um, so for this, I found that being humble to the spirits, because if they can make you, they can break you. And I've seen it. You know what I'm saying? I've seen people work, start out good, 
they doing what they need to do, boom, 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 and then they stop doing what they need to do because they get comfortable, or maybe the spirits didn't do one thing that they wanted them to do for whatever reason, and then they kind of like change their practice or change the they stop attending to certain things. And then the spirits start causing problems. Well, it's not that the spirits really start causing problems. It's that because you stop attending to them, they're not able to protect you from life, from the shit that just happens in life. And when you don't have that protection, you feel as if somebody's doing something to you. You're like, oh shit, are the spirits mad at me? Did I do something wrong? It's like, no, no, no. It don't work like that. We don't get initiated into these practices to become slaves. That's not what that's not what this is. Um, particularly, the Apollo tradition, in which the very spirit of a of a of a of a, of a Tata or Yaya Zanganga is actually his or her slave. I don't necessarily look at my spirits as slaves, though. I look at the spirits that I work with um, on my shrines. I, I work with them as my family, and I always look at them as my family. I will never look at them as slaves. Yes, they do serve me, but they're not my slaves. You know what I mean? And, and, and because of that, we have a very, very, very family-oriented spirit um, in our home, in our house. You know what I'm saying? Our, our spirits are our invisible family. And everybody who's initiated in my house, the spirits are their invisible family as well. And I teach my God children and my students um, that we approach the spirits like that, that we approach them as family. So when I'm teaching them to be humble and I'm telling them to be humble, or have humility, which is another pillar that I live by. I am um, telling them to be humble to the spirit, um, you know, not necessarily to another human being, but to the spirits. And by being humble to the spirits, you'll get the guidance and the insight that you need that will teach you when to be humble um, when you come across certain individuals who may want to um, test your ego or something of that nature. I don't, it's, it's for me personally, I find it hard to, to be humble when people try to come for me. You know what I mean? And that's something that I'm honestly working on myself because I know that you ain't got to re respond and react to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Even shit that people say about you or whatever, you ain't got to respond and react to everything. So, you know what I mean? As I work on myself and to better myself, I'm noticing that I don't have to respond to everything that somebody say or do. You know what I mean? Because sometimes just responding inflames or intensifies the particular situation you know what i'm saying whereas if you were to just ignore the shit you'd be surprised at how fast that individual who is bringing you negativity will just disappear because you're not giving them attention um and that's something that i have to work on you know what i mean that's something that i have to work on especially in this spiritual community online and stuff like that because everybody wants to be respected for their initiation and their titles and all of these different things and this is another reason why i try to stay away from people and i don't talk bad about people even when other spiritual like if a person hasn't said anything about me or they haven't done anything to me i don't say anything bad about that person people ask me all the time or tell me you know um that they working with this Tata or they working with that Tata. And I don't know those people, so I can't say whether or not a person is good. I honestly want everybody to be good. I want to be able to point and say, look, man, well, I'm in Georgia, so I can't really help you the way you need help. But I know Tata so-and-so live in Florida, you know what I mean? And he's good. He's been doing this for a long time, and his godchildren appear to be good. That's the extent of what I know about what goes on in his house. But you can reach out to that person, and you can ask them um you can ask them um if they can help you since they're in the area because when you get initiated into a, a house whether it's an arisha ile or whether it's a Apollo house or what have you when you get initiated you really want to be initiated in a house that's close to your locale wherever wherever you live you want to find the house that's in your location your state your city 
somewhere close because for you to grow with the spirits, you need to be able to visit the house where the spirits are living regularly so that you can learn from your padrino or learn from your madrina and so forth on a daily basis. We learn this practice by living it, especially Palo. Palo is one of the religions or those practices where you ain't going to really find too much in books. And anything that you find in books is questionable because different Ramas do things different ways and different lineages do things different ways. So you can't just go and use Femas and Patipembas that you find on the internet and think that they're going to work for you in the same way that they may work for the person who's who, who put that out there. Because they may use that in their house and those symbols may be created based on um, the iconography of their particular lineage and so forth. So you have to be careful with that. You know what I'm saying? With just grabbing stuff off the internet and using it. Um, usually, if I come across something on the internet, I will divine first to see if this is going to work. Or I'll divine to see if the spirit receives this as that or this. You know what I mean? Like I check everything that I do. So <clears throat> humility is something that um, humility when it comes to the spirit is something that I hold dear to my spiritual growth, primarily because I was never the type of person that walked around beating my chest. Oh, I'm this. I'm that. I'm this and I'm that. Sometimes in my house, you know what I mean? I do have to um, pull rank and I have to, you know, uh, let it remind the people around, around me that, you know, it is me who holds the licencia. I'm not saying that to say that I'm better than anybody in my house. I'm just saying like at the end of the day, um, it's me who holds the licencia to be able to do many things um, in, a, in a house, to do, be able to do everything that we need to be able to do. And it's also me who extends licencia to the members of the house. So, I still, even in a leadership position, try to remain humble. You know what I mean? I don't try to be an asshole. I'm not the type of person that's going to boss you around or nothing like that. Like, I don't do shit like that. You know what I mean? I treat people the way that I want to be treated. And um, which is why I get usually pissed off when people disrespect me because I don't fucking fuck with nobody. I don't, I don't need to. You understand what I'm saying? Only people who feel a lacking of or some type of insecurity within themselves feel like they got to go out and talk shit about this one or do this and do that because i feel like if anything that you want to manifest and you working in the spiritual realm the challenge should always be on your spirits to manifest it for you first you shouldn't have to go out and do shit to people or talk shit about people i shouldn't have to talk about leonard or something like that for me to grow i shouldn't have to do that you know what I mean? Because that just shows that we're shit. If I got to do that, then what the fuck are my spirits doing? You know what I'm saying? To the point where I can't get out here and share my knowledge or share my journey or share my insight. You know what I'm saying? And people naturally want to know more about it without me having to motherfucking talk about somebody else. So <clears throat> faith and humility are definitely two very important pillars or things that I live by in my spiritual practice, which allowed me to gain a a level of mastery over spirits and working with spirits. Um, and then there is the, the one that most people struggle with the most, and that's patience. Most people struggle with patience. Um, this is something that I try to express very, very, very uh, uh, regularly with my clients as well as with my God children and my God siblings and so forth, as I always try to teach them patience, patience. You know what I mean? Sometimes because I've seen so many different manifestations. I've seen so many different ways that the spirit manifests. Sometimes the spirit may not manifest on some shit to two years later. You'd be like, damn, I, I did do some shit. Yeah, I did do some shit for that to manifest. Damn, it sure took long enough. But for me, when I do shit, I usually just do it and then I forget. So I don't keep obsessing over the work. I don't keep, I may for the, for the first, for the first 21 days or so after I do a work, 
I may, I may check on it every other day to make sure that the spirit is still on that person and so forth. After that, I'm probably, I'm usually too busy to, to keep obsessing over some shit. I can't obsess over shit, which is, I don't even understand how people be obsessing over enemies and shit like that. Like, how do you, how do you just sit back and waste your entire day in front of your ganga trying to curse somebody on the internet? Instead of living your life like that kind of shit, I just don't understand, and, and I, I probably will never understand it because it's probably associated with some type of psychosis or mental uh, uh, disability that an individual who operates like that might be dealing with. But patience is something that <clears throat> that I have learned um, that you can't escape. You know what I mean? Like we can do things to try to make things happen faster in our works, in the way that we work with the spirit. And, um, but even when we send out a spirit in Paulo, you know what I'm saying? Even when we send out a spirit in Paulo, there's something that we say. So you may hear like in a, in a temple setting, you may hear a palero or a tata. When he sends out a spirit, you may hear him say, piango, piango. Okay. What that means is go slowly. You telling the spirit go, but go slowly and do it right. And this is also, if we saying that, then we must already know that we have to be patient. We got to let the spirit work. Okay. So if the spirit is working, we got to sit back. We got to understand that, especially when working in the realm of the dead and working in the realm of Apollo and spiritism, it doesn't work where you are always going to get an instantaneous uh, manifestation. You know what I mean? And that, for me, I've never really, I've never said that any spiritual work is guaranteed to manifest in 21 days. I said we give the spirit 21 days to show us that it's working. And then in 21 days, if you want, you can follow up and check with me, book a follow up, check with me and see, hey, you know what I mean? I just want to see if spirit is still on top of this person. Um, this is what's been going on. And then if, you know, we send the spirit out again, um, we do this. We do this to, um, we do this to keep the energy on that person. You know what I mean? And because I don't, I can't dedicate that kind of energy to one client where I'm constantly going back, 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 sending the spirit. Um, but usually you don't have to do that. Usually when the people do the follow up and then I check, you know, the spirit is still there. It's just working. And that's all they really want to know. So I try to tell the clients, you know what I mean? Be patient. Don't get a spiritual work done if you're not willing to wait on it to manifest. And most of y'all, because y'all get work done on the internet, everything is instantaneous. Because when you think about the internet, you think about quickness, you think about fast, you think about how I can buy something online, it can be delivered to my house in this many days, or I can buy something online, I can immediately watch it, or I can immediately download it. So our minds are programmed for instant gratification. Not only because we live in a society that's based on instant gratification, we tend to think that because we bought it or paid for it on the internet, that it has to happen fast. Every question every client asks me is, so how long is it going to take? And if my, every answer is, it's going to take as long as it's going to take. But what you can do is you can check up on your work every 21 days to see if that is manifesting. You know what I mean? But as long as I tell you that the spirit is there working or the spirit is on that person, all you got to do is sit back and wait. That's really all you got to do is sit back and wait. Because sometimes the spirit can affect a person based on their own per based on their own energy, what they got going on in their life, based on their, their ancestry. It's a lot that goes into understanding why a spirit can manifest quickly in one situation versus why it doesn't manifest quickly in another. So patience is something that um, that I stress a lot. And the last one, the last pillar, right, that I follow, okay, we already talked about faith. We talked about um, being humble or humility to the spirit. We talked about patience. And the final one, these four of these four that have allowed me to grow and to become successful as a spiritualist 
and to become more skilled as a spiritualist is obedience. Obedience to the spirit. A lot of people take this out of context. And we always say in our house, obedience is better than sacrifice. Okay? Obedience is better than sacrifice. So if a spirit gives you a warning, a message, or anything of that nature, a dream, or anything, anything where they're telling you, look, you need to do this. All right? And you like, well, shit, I ain't going to do that right now. I can't do it right now. You know what I'm saying? And the next thing you know, because you didn't do it, some fucked up shit happened. You know what I mean? Like one of my godchildren may come over to my house and they may need to get cleaned. And they may say, well, shit, I don't have time. I can't, I can't get clean right now. I'm like, look, spirit said you need to be clean, dog. You know what I'm saying? You need to get clean right now. Well, I don't feel like doing it right now. I can, look, I'm only tell you a couple of times and then I'm going to be like, okay, you don't want to get clean? Go ahead. You see what I mean? Then they walk out back into the world and they get into some shit. Or some shit happens. Or I may tell them, look, you know what I mean? So-and-so want to be fed. You need to feed so-and-so because you got some shit going on. And, oh, I, I do it. Can I do it next week? You know what I mean? Oh, I only got this much money. Can I do it? Look, obedience is better than sacrifice. And when you move for the spirit, they move for you. I didn't understand the Christian when I didn't really get a grip on the Christian um, parable that of taking um, you take one step towards God and he take 10 steps towards you until I became a spiritist. You know what I mean? If a spirit see that you willing to travel for it, then it's willing to travel for you. If a spirit see that you willing to sacrifice for it that it will sacrifice for you. It will do everything in its power to protect you when you do shit like that. When I lived in Chicago, I used to have to, when the spirits wanted a sacrifice of like a chibo or a goat or something like that, man, I would drive two hours to get a goat if I had to. If my car wasn't big enough to fit the goat, because where I used to get goats at, they was like huge. If the, if I couldn't If I couldn't fit the goat in my car, then... I would go rent a van or a truck just so that I can get that goat to the temple. I would go out of my way to get the spirits what they need so that they can do what they need to do to me for me. Okay? So obedience is very, very, very important. And a lot of times, most people fail at this particular pillar in, in any spiritual practice when it comes to conflict. There have been many times that I have had some type of conflict with an individual, maybe online or what have you, or in person. And I will go and I will go to my spirits and be like, do I need to do anything about this? And they ever say no. And if they tell me no, ain't no need to put that person in a pot. Ain't no need to do nothing. The spirit got it. They're gonna take care of it. That's obedience. Because, say for instance, like I had received a message that a particular person in the community um, here in Atlanta had went to some of their shrines on me. So the spirit said, don't do nothing. I said, okay. I ain't do shit. You know? And the reason with then they showed me later why they didn't want me to do nothing because had I got in my ego, like, how dare this motherfucker send a spirit at me? I'm going to put this motherfucker in every goddamn pot. Like, if I would have went half cocked on some motherfucking emotional shit, right, and declare war with this person, right, then that would have put me, that would have took me out of the spirit of righteousness. Now I would have been guilty to the spirits. Like, oh, so you just going to wage war on somebody who ain't wage war on you. You see what I'm saying? You're going to wage war on a person who ain't did shit to you. You automatically step out of alignment when you do that. You automatically step out of alignment. I don't fuck with people unless they fuck with me. Period. Most of the people that got problems with me would not be having problems if they would just leave me the fuck alone. Period. Just leave me the fuck alone. Be obedient to the spirit because I guarantee you if you go in front of your shrine 
and you ask your shrine, does Nebro want to be an enemy? The spirit going to say, no, he don't. Nebro don't really give a fuck about you enough to want to, I don't care enough about a nigga who got beef with me. I don't care what he doing in his life. I hope he living his best fucking life or she living her best fucking life. That ain't got shit to do with me. Why I'm going to stay mad at a motherfucker forever, man? Do you know what that do to your spirit? Do you know what that do to your quality of life when you obsessed and you motherfucking stay mad at a nigga all day? Every I can't stay mad at a nigga. Like, I'm the type of dude that will cuss you out and then be friends with you 10 minutes later. Be friends with you 10 minutes later. Talking about, yo, yo let's, go, let's go have a brew. Let's go chill. You know what I'm saying? Like, I be like, brush that shit off. People in the spiritual com community, man, you get into a verbal altercation with these people and they ready to dedicate their life to trying to destroy you because their ego is inside of the pot. Their ego is inside of the pot. They do not have a respect for the spiritual forces, which they have been given license to work with. And then what they do is they abuse it until it begins to start backfiring and abusing them. I've seen it happen too many times. So obedience is a very important pillar to me. If a spirit tell me don't do something, I ain't doing it. If the spirit tell me don't talk to a person, I ain't talking to them. And I ain't got to get a person no explanation because I may not know why a spirit don't want me to talk to you. I may not know why the spirit don't want me to initiate you at the moment. If I ask the spirit, should I initiate this person? Do y'all want me to initiate this person? And they say no. I'm not going to sit there and try to investigate, well, why? What's the reason? Or why? I may. They may tell me right away, but usually it'll come up in a reading. You know what I'm saying? Like, for instance, this sister, uh, this woman um, contacted me, and um, she wants to get, she was, um, in her reading, it came up that she needed to be initiated, but they weren't going to let her. There's certain things that you got to do. You know what I mean? So the spirit was like, yo... I asked them, do they want me to initiate her? They said, yeah, but she needs to attend to her ego before she can be initiated. The spirits did not want this woman to be initiated with me until she at least set up a bovada in honor of her ancestors and started paying attention to her ancestors. They did not, her ancestors did not want her to pay attention to any other spirits before she paid attention to them. Because they were demanding attention. Okay? So you have to be obedient. And some people jump into these practices without doing that. Without being thorough like that. And then they run into complications and problems. But good thing, I mean, bad things happen to good people. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't never want to be in no spiritual beef with none of these clowns on the internet. But, you know, shit happens. And the fact that I'm still good. After all the negativity that's come at me, it shows that these four pillars are what protect me. They are what have kept me on a straight and narrow. They have what allowed me to not fall into my ego. They have what allowed me to continually grow. And so I hope that me sharing this with y'all today will help you on your spiritual journey. Whether whatever house or whatever tradition you follow these can this can be applied to any tradition whether you in voodoo orisha ifa apollo kimbanda obia whatever it is that you practice i wish all of y'all well in y'all practices and i pray that everything that y'all ask for that is good comes into manifestation and that you're able to live your life in a balanced way without having to hurt other people and that's the message that I'm going to continue to put out here is that you could do whatever you want and get whatever you want and you don't have to hurt other people. Do not let these traumatized, bitter people who have gotten into these traditions and now they want to be evil trick you into thinking that the best way to get what you want in these practices is to flex your ego. You ain't got to do that. All you got to do is sit back and chill. Sometimes the best thing to do is to do nothing at all. And with that, I'm going to end this video. And um, I'll see y'all on the next video. And I hope y'all enjoy. Peace. Click the link if y'all want to book a reading.